This beast working away behind me here is my new super potion brewer using the create mod. This thing's amazing. It can brew any potion, any level, and it is fully automatic. That's right. You can have a simple potion brewer that does it all, all the way up to the super automatic potion brewer. So stay tuned and we will be learning how to do it. Now this is gonna be your starting point for the potion brewer. This is a single module potion brewer right here. It will only brew up awkward potions in this state and it'll store them in this tank here. There's no real automation in this model just yet, except for the hopper, of course, which feeds the material into the basin. You have your power source that comes in from the back here. You have an infinite water source for it to draw water from. You have the blaze burner down below, and if I fuel it, you'll see the system goes to work and starts brewing up potions. Here's a quick look at the material list we're gonna need for this potion brewer. Now I'm gonna be brewing up splash night vision potions that are max duration. So that's gonna take four brewing modules to make this happen. If you're brewing up different potions, you might need a different amount of modules. Just know that you need one module for each ingredient added. Really quick on the material list, pause it if you need to. These mechanical belts, you actually only need five. Fluid tanks, that's up to you. As big as the storage as you want or as small. And then going down, you can see all the different things we're gonna need. Okay, so let's go ahead and start off by building the first module, which is the potion brewer itself. So start with your infinite water source and put a pipe down in it just like that. Put another one on top of it, and we're gonna put a mechanical pump right there coming off the side. Then we'll take our basin, put it right there. Blaze burner underneath. Come over on this side, attach a hopper. And now we're gonna to need to attach a power supply to the system. So you're gonna take a cog and put it right there. Then we want a clutch, put it right there. Next, a vertical gearbox right there. And this is where our power is gonna come in from. Since this is a tutorial, I'm just gonna use a creative motor. Power it however you can, but I do suggest putting it at max 256 RPM because that's what's needed for the timings with this system. So next to brew the potions up, it's gonna need a mixer on top. So go ahead, put a mixer right there and let's connect it up by using a vertical gearbox right there. And we'll just do one shaft and one cog, just like that. Next, we're gonna wanna take a smart fluid pipe and attach it to the basin like that. And we're gonna use an awkward potion for the filter. Then one more mechanical pump, just like that. And we can go ahead and toss in another basin at the end and another blaze burner. Now, since we're gonna be making level two night vision potions, we know we're gonna need four basins to make this work. So let's go ahead and continue that on and finish the line. Next, we're gonna to wanna to make sure our fluid pumps are all pointing the right direction. They need to be going that away. So let's switch that one. That one's good, let's switch that one. And now they're all pointed properly. So I use the awkward potion in this first filter, but in this second filter, I want night vision coming out of it. So I'm gonna to have to put a tier one night vision potion in that filter a tier two night vision potion in this filter. And then in this filter right here, we're gonna put a splash night vision tier two potion, the ultimate potion. Okay, the filters are now set up. If we were to fuel these blaze burners and add the ingredients, it would start brewing away potions, but they've got nowhere to go. So it would stop after it brewed the first set. So let's go ahead and give our final potion somewhere to go. Go ahead and take another mechanical pump and attach it right there. And we're gonna put our fluid tank right here. Make it as big as you want, like I said. I'm gonna make it nice and tall for plenty of storage. And we'll need to connect this pump up to the system. So grab a shaft and a cog, like so, and you're good to go. And so there you go, this is module one. This is all you need to brew the potions nice and easily with the create mod and it'll get you a max level or whatever type you want, splashing or not. You just need one of these modules for each ingredient. But now let's get into automating this thing. First off, the system. We wanna be able to unpower the system when it's not in use. And the way we're gonna do that is by using a content observer and we're gonna put one on each hopper just like this. So each one of these is observing the hopper and anytime there's something in that hopper, it'll send a redstone signal out the back. Then we're gonna take some blocks for support for our redstone, they could be any kind of block you want. And we're gonna connect them all just like that and then go two blocks past. Then take some redstone and connect all of these up just like this. Then we're gonna take one pulse extender, put it right there, 
a redstone link right there and make this any frequency you want. Then go back to this pulse extender. It's probably on two ticks. You want to put it up to two minutes and that'll give the system enough time to brew anything that is possibly left within it. And finally, there's one more step with this pulse extender. Right click it so that it inverts the signal. Next, let's go back to where our power source is located. Remember this clutch we threw in earlier? That's to turn the system on and off. So we'll put a redstone link right there and we'll put the frequency in there. We use redstone, so it's redstone. And finally, right click it with a wrench to make it a receiver and you see the system turned off. That's because there's nothing currently in the hoppers and nothing has powered that pulse extender yet. But you'll see if I throw something in this hopper, the system turns on and goes to work. If I take it out, it stops, but the two minute pulse extender is still waiting on that pulse. So it's gonna go for two more minutes. So there we go, we have a bit of an automation module there. So we can turn the system on and off whenever we need to. But next we got those blaze burners. Those things are a bit of a pain to have to fuel them manually. So we wanna hook up a system to fuel them automatically. To do that, we're gonna use deployers. Put one a space behind, and if you shift right click it, it'll go in just like that. Shift right click again and one more. Then take your wrench, right click each one of those deployers so that the cog input is facing up just like so and take a hopper and put them right behind each one just like that. Then take a vertical gearbox, put one right there, one right there, one right there and one right there. Then we're going to take a shaft and connect those up. Next, you want to take a clutch and put it down here on the end and then take a cog and connect it to the main system like that. Then we're gonna take some blocks to support our redstone again, and we're gonna make a little bit of an S coming off of that clutch right there, just like so. Then take a pulse extender and put it right there, and you wanna put it up to a one second extension. And then right click that so it's inverted. Then grab yourself a redstone repeater and put it right there, and then take some redstone and connect it all up just like this, Leave this one empty and put one right there. Then take a pulse repeater, put it just like that. And now this pulse repeater is actually pretty important. This is where you're gonna set your timing for the fuel you're using. Now, if you're using a bunch of random fuel, then it's gonna be hard to do this and you're gonna to wanna to keep it at a fairly low tick. But for the tutorial, I'm gonna be using blaze cakes to power the blaze burners. And I know that those have a 50 second burn time. So I'm gonna put this up at about 45 seconds. So that has enough time to refuel right before the fuel runs out. If you're using something like say boats, I believe they have a 60 second timer. So you'd want to put this at about a 55 second timer so that it refuels properly. And if you're using something smaller, like say bamboo, bamboo has a 2.5 second burn time, which isn't much, which means you probably won't want to delay and you can just let this thing run on its own. So now we have to power this little clock we've created here, put a block there, and take an observer and put it right there. Then take a sticky piston and put it just like that so that it's facing into the observer. Next, take a couple blocks, put them off the edge just like that. Have a pulse extender up top and you want a redstone link right there. The frequency is redstone dust, of course, and we're gonna right click it so that it's receiving. We don't want the observer to be in an extended state at the moment, so let's right click this extender and bring it back. And now that part of the system's done. So let's go ahead, throw something in here again and see if it works. So it kicked on and the observer got put out into the extended state. Now there's a charge building up here, which is about to let loose. And once it does, we should see these deployers kick off just once. Oh, and there it goes, and there they went. And if there were fuel in those hoppers, they would have lit the blaze burners up, started the brewer cooking. Now our next module is gonna be overflow protection. If this tank were to fill up, the system would keep going even though it had nothing to cook. So we wanna turn off the system when the tank fills up. So let's go ahead, and grab a couple blocks, put them just like that. You're gonna take a stockpile switch this time and put it just like that. And then a redstone link there and we're gonna use that same old redstone dust frequency. Now right click your stockpile switch and you're gonna see this little UI here. What you should do is scroll so that this redstone bit goes up. I like maxing it out so that the system doesn't turn off until the tank is totally full. And then hit the check mark and you're good to go. Now this little monitoring module is done. 
Now, if we want to up this another notch, we want to add some form of delivery system so that all of the material for the brewing and for the blaze burners gets added automatically. So let's go ahead and move on to that step. So start off on this side, put a block right there for now and a shaft right there. And then let's go down to this side and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put a block there and a shaft there, remove the block. Let's take a belt and connect those two shafts just like so. Next, take a smart chute and put it on top of each of the hoppers. And we're gonna need to filter all of those smart chutes. And so depending on what you're brewing up, add the appropriate item to the filter. This is the first slot, it's gonna need nether wart, so that's gonna go in here. Second slot for night vision potions are gonna need golden carrots. Third slot will need redstone dust to boost its power. And the fourth slot will need gunpowder so that it becomes splash potion. Next, you'll want to come down to this end, take a regular gearbox and attach it right there. Then you want to take another shaft, attach it right there, go to this opposite side over here, take some temporary blocks and attach one, two above that bit of redstone, put a shaft in there and then remove the temporary blocks and take your belt and connect those two shafts like so. Next, we're going to take another shaft, attach it right there and then come along this side right here, looking at this bit of the belt, shift right click another shaft and it should go in right there. Now take a regular chute and attach it to the top of all of these hoppers and then take a smart chute and put one on top of each of those chutes. Then come down to this end, take a temporary block, put it right there and take a shaft and put it right there and then add two more and remove the middle one and remove your temporary block. Then take a belt and connect these shafts to the ones on the other end. Now that we have the belt set up, come back to these smart chutes that we set up earlier down here and you want to put a filter on them with whatever fuel you're using. I'm going to be using blaze cake so I'm going to do it just like that. And I have one blaze cake in my hand so I'm going to right click it again and you'll see it shows a one there. If I had more, say 64, you would see it would change. We don't want that. We just want to see a one there. So make sure it has a one just like so. And do that to all these smart chutes. Then take a vertical gearbox and put it right in between the two belts there. And take a regular gearbox and put it right there on the opposite side. Then take a shaft, put one right there, there. Take one more gearbox and put it there. And then one more shaft right there. And then take a belt and connect all the way from one end to the other. Then you're going to need two brass tunnels. Put one right there and one right there. You're also going to need two barrels, so put a barrel right there and do the same on the opposite side, just like that. And take a brass funnel, attach a brass funnel to each one of the barrels pointing towards the tunnel. And I like to right click the funnels with a branch so that they extend all the way like that because I think it looks better. And then come over to this side of the contraption, take one more brass funnel and put it right there going into that barrel. Now these two brass tunnels are going to need filters. This first filter here is where we're going to want our fuel for our deployers going. And like I said, I'm going to be using blaze cake, so I'm just going to put in one blaze cake right there. Now all the blaze cakes will come down this line and then they'll get cycled around back into the system and they'll cycle through until they're used up. And then over on this side, this filter is a little more advanced. So get yourself a regular filter, right click it, and you're gonna wanna add one of each material ingredient you're gonna need for brewing your potions in each one of these slots. As you can see, those are the four items that I need for brewing. So this filter is correct, so let's give it a check and put it right there. Now, any of those items that come along this belt will get sent this way and anything else will go into this barrel. So this barrel is where anything that's not supposed to be in the system will end up. Now back to the power source. We want to put in a shaft right there and a vertical gearbox just like so. Then take a clutch, attach the clutch right there, then take a shaft and put it right there and a regular gearbox attaching it all. Now the system should be moving. But again, we don't want it to always be moving. So take some blocks and put them underneath just like this and you can go ahead and remove that one. We're gonna take a pulse extender and right click it and you'll see the system turns off. Just what we wanna see. Now we're gonna put this extension at five seconds. 
and then we're gonna take a redstone link, put it back there, but we're gonna put a different frequency in this one. Since this is for fueling, I'm just gonna go ahead and use a blaze cake because it's for fueling, but you can use whatever frequency you want as long as it doesn't match the other frequency we already used. And then take your wrench and right click the link so that it's a receiver. Next, come on over to this side, take a content observer and attach it to the barrel just like that. Then take a couple building blocks, put them right there, Take a pulse extender, have it coming off of the content observer like that into a redstone link. And this is our blaze cake link. So we're gonna put that just like that. And we're gonna make this a two second extension. So now this system is set up and this is your drop off point. Anything that the system needs should go in here. This is the only point you're gonna have to access other than when you need to take the potion out of the system. So let's go ahead and throw something in here that shouldn't be in here and see if the system kicks to life. There it does, and it should kick off in five seconds. And it did, and that item that shouldn't be in the system should be in this barrel, and there it is. Awesome. We are in the home stretch now. We now have a fully automated brewing system, but we still have no way to remove the potion from the system. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of an access point right now. So for this step, take a fluid pipe and attach it right there next to the belt. Then take a mechanical pump and attach it to that side just like so. Next, take a spout and put it right there. Gonna grab a couple building blocks to place things on. I'm gonna put a depot right there under the spout. And finally, content observer right here. Now it's probably gonna be facing the wrong direction. This little white bit here needs to face the depot. So if it's facing the wrong way, just take your wrench, right click on top until it's facing the right side. Next, you wanna take a redstone link, attach it right there, and we want this one to be on our blaze cake frequency. So let's put that right in there. And then finally, we need some power coming to this pump. So take a shaft, put the shaft right there, and one more to extend it, then take a cog wheel and put it right there. And now this system's done. And the way this works is whenever you need a potion, you're gonna take your empty bottles and put them down on this depot. And when you'll do, you see the content observer reads it and turns the system on. And if there was potion in here, it would start spitting it out into the empty bottles, filling them up for us nice and easy. And then when we remove everything from the depot, a few seconds later, that portion of the system turns off. And so that is the max level potion brewer right there, but we haven't tried it out yet. Let's see if this system really works. We're gonna take all of our materials and throw them in this barrel like so. System is brewing away, working like a charm. We've got max night vision potion filling up our tank super quickly. And let's see if we can get potion. Yep, there it goes. You gotta love it. You know what I love doing with the crate mod? Going up and down and up and down in my elevator that I made on the Create server. If you want to make one just like I did, check out that tutorial right there. And I teach you exactly how to do it. But for now, from my potion brewing stand of superior amazingness, thank you all for watching and as always, I'll see you next time.